And good evening and welcome to the Rocky Long Show. John Cantero live at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill out in the Grossmont Center. And uh, it's going to be week one for the San Diego State Aztecs. They play the, not only their season opener, but their home opener this Saturday at Qualcomm Stadium at 5 o'clock against Eastern Illinois. The Panthers coming to town, being coached by a, a former San Diego High uh, football star and Dino Babers out of Morse High School. But joining me, and this will be first of many, and uh, we're hoping it goes uh, deep into December. The Rocky Long Show, the head coach of the Aztecs, getting ready to embark on his third year, Rocky Long. and. Uh, Rocky, uh, good to see you. Uh, look, uh, you look relaxed on Wednesday night. <laughs> I don't know. It, it looks are deceiving, I think, Coach. I, I tell you what, uh, I'm a little nervous about these things because uh, I think they've got a really good football team that people don't know too much about. And I don't know how we're going to come out. You know, the first game is always a question mark. You don't know how you're going to play. And there's some guys that are going to play for the first time. We have some veteran players, really good players, uh, and you expect them to play well, but you don't know how the youngsters are going to play. Uh, we're going to take phone calls on this uh, program as well. We'll get to that a little bit later on. We have a lot of things we want to get to. I will give you the phone number, though. It's 866-405-1717. 866-405-1717. Uh, the first uh, five Rocky Long shows will be heard right here on ESPN 1700. And then at the conclusion of Padre Baseball season, Rocky will join me each and every Wednesday night for a full hour in the 7 o'clock hour on the mighty 1090. Uh, Rocky, um, you're getting ready to start your third year. Your evaluation, and I know you're a guy that's very much into self-evaluation and evaluating your program. How would you assess the first two years taking over for Brady Hoke? I, I think uh, Brady started a good thing, and I think we've continued it. I, I think... Uh, uh, we've uh, he started some traditional things we do as a team. We've continued all those. Uh, I think that uh, maybe we've improved the recruiting. Uh, I think our coaches have done a great job going out and recruiting some players. Some of that has to do you have uh, you have a better chance of getting some really good players when you win a few games too. Uh, but what I'm most proud of is I, I think the kids that have been in the program. Some of them now, now that we recruited, but for a while there was a couple years it was guys that were recruited before we got here. Uh, what, what we've done, I think, as a staff and as players have learned how to play hard all the time. Uh, we don't get intimidated by anybody. We get into a football game and we want it to be rough and tumble and all that stuff. And if they'll get in that kind of game with us, we've got a chance to win. Evaluate uh, training camp. Now you're in, uh, obviously, game mode, but uh, training camp, were you, were you pleased? Did you get the answers at least going into the first game that you thought you needed? No, not really. I, I, think, I think we feel very comfortable with our starting quarterback. I'm not sure we feel comfortable about who our backup running back is yet. There's probably two or three of them that we're going to try to use on Saturday. We're real, we feel really good about the tight ends. We feel good about the offensive line, feel good about the wide receivers. On defense, we feel good about everything but our corners. And our corners were really hot and cold uh, in camp. I mean, one day you say, okay, now, now we're okay. Now we're going to go do this and we're going to go do that. And the next day, people are running by them catching touchdown passes. Now, that might be really good for the offense that we can throw the deep ball, but, but uh, there's always a concern when they're throwing it over your head. You know, uh, you know, just reading the different articles. And the thing that I've always loved about you, dating back to when I used to interview you uh, on game week when the Aztecs would play New Mexico, is you've always been very, very honest. And I think a lot of coaches nowadays, you know, they, 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 they tend to either sugarcoat things or say absolutely nothing. You're one of the old school type of guys. <laughs> that, hey, you're a football coach, and this is the way we have to do it, and uh, you, you're not afraid to, you know, be, uh, I don't want to say controversial, but uh, right to the point. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to be controversial, and I'm not smart enough to lie, so <laughs> so I, I, tell, I, I try to tell it as I see it, and then some people agree, some people don't agree. Uh, I tell you what, uh, I think our players appreciate it. I, as a player, I always appreciated a coach being brutally or deadly honest with me I'm, i mean they want to know exactly where they stand so they can make decisions about getting better or moving on or whatever they want to make a decision for but i, I think players appreciate you when you're honest with them I, I think sometimes when you get recruiting guys you, you kind of stretch the truth a little bit and then you're afraid to tell them the truth after you get them on campus a uh, reminder this week the game will be heard live on the walrus 105.7 fm that's 105.7 FM, uh, the Walrus. 
Let's talk about uh, your new office of coordinator, longtime friend, a man that's done a lot of wonderful things in this uh, business, uh, Bob Toledo. And uh, is he uh, bringing the West Coast uh, version of his offense to this uh, Aztec offense this year? Well, he is, and it's uh, his version of the West Coast offense. And uh, most, most people know now that uh, I hire an offensive coordinator that they're in charge of the offense. I don't, I don't ever call a play. The only thing I do on offense is say whether we're going for it on fourth down or not. Uh, and I have great trust. I mean, he's, he's, Bob's a good friend of mine, but I have great trust in what he does. I know he's a great football coach. He's got a great football mind. So why not? I mean, why would you get involved in that? Why would, why would you mess with someone that knows what the heck he's doing? And we're glad he's here. Well, he had a, a great run at UCLA. You were a part of that. You end up going to New Mexico. He comes in as an assistant for you for one year, and then he takes the job at Tulane, and, and that was really an uphill battle. I mean, they had a lot of things to overcome. Uh, he uh, was let go at the end of last year, resigned, whatever you want to say. Did you make that first phone call? He called you? How did it work? No, I, I called him. I mean, he, I think he was happily retired. I, <laughs> I, I think he was living in Westlake, and, and I think he was playing golf three or four times a week, and, and I think he was really enjoying things. But uh, uh, you know this. I mean, once it's in your blood, you can do a lot of different things, but it's still there someplace. And all I had to do was call him up and say, hey, I needed a guy, and what do you think? And he said, well, let me talk to my wife. And then he called me back a day or so later and said, He'd love to do it, but him and I have such a good relationship. When when he was the head coach and I was the defensive coordinator, I mean, it was just the opposite. He didn't tell me one thing to do. Now, when they were scoring points, he was wondering what was going on. He asked me what the heck's going on, but he never told me what coverage to call. He never told me the blitz, not blitz. He never said a word. And uh, him and I have worked together when he was the offensive coordinator, and I, I don't say anything except – he gets on the headset, we going for it or not? Because they want to know a couple downs ahead, you know, so they can kind of plan. But uh, it works for us, and, and that's the way I've always been with offensive coordinators. So, and if they can't do the job, then you go get another guy. We'll uh, talk uh, more about the offense and personnel as we go through this hour. Again, this is the Rocky Long Show. Heard uh, each and every uh, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, the first five weeks of the season on ESPN 1700. And then uh, come uh, game, or week six, we'll uh, jump over to the mighty 1090. And Rocky will join me in the uh, 7 o'clock hour. We're going to take a lot of phone calls. want to remind you, uh, we're here at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill. It is the official sponsor of the Aztecs Coaches Show uh, with Rocky Long. Hooley's is home of the famous corned beef tacos and other award-winning menu items. And on Wednesday throughout the season, Hooley's at the Gross Sponsor center will have coach long right here on site for the show why do you like that 335 defense so much <laughs> well it's an interesting deal uh when we first started using it it was at oregon state and uh at the time we could not recruit oregon state had been in they're not like they are now they're now, pretty jerry good pettibone now. the head coach jerry pettibone's the head coach and he's running the wishbone uh, on offense. And we, our first year, we run a 4-3 cover two, basically. Two deep zone with a 4-3 front. And guess what? At Oregon State, we don't have two techniques, or we don't have defensive tackles. We're playing with, you know, 225-pound defensive tackles against the likes of SC and UCLA and Washington and all those guys. And so at the end of the season, Coach Pettibone came to me and said, is there anything we can do? And I said, yeah, there's, there's something we can do, but you... As a head coach, you've got to be willing to take the chance. He says, what are you talking about? I said, well, I work for a guy named Jolie Dunn, who was a 3-3-5 guy. And I said, there's a lot of things we can do, and we'll give some people a terrible time, and we'll have a chance to win the game. And there's other times they might score 100 points, so you've got to be ready for that. <laughs> and, he, and I said, I said, are you ready for that? And he goes, oh, let me think. We were 1-10 we were and 10 that first year. He says, and we're going to win more than one. I said, I guarantee you we'll win three or four games just because we'll play really good on defense. I said, but now the rest of the time, you got to be ready for them to put up 100 points. And he said, well, that sounds good to me. Let's do it. So, so we started it there because we had pretty good athletes, but they were all small. And the only way to play with small guys in that league is to have them move around and hit gaps and not, not try to gap control or take on blockers and get rid of blockers, try to penetrate the line of scrimmage and try not to get blocked. So it started there, and then from there on, uh, the people that hired me liked that kind of scheme, and it just continued that way. Is that a tough defense to coach? It is at first. It's really tough for freshmen because they've never played it before. 
But by the time they get to be juniors and seniors, they don't want to do it the other way. Because uh, I, I relate it to a, a block and a punt. When you send guys to block a punt, you don't know exactly who's going to come free. So they all have to go full speed to get it. And so when we coach our defense, we tell them every one of them has a chance to make a play. We're not counting on the defensive linemen to take up double teams so the linebackers can run and make a tackle. If, if you slant and they forget to block you and you're in the backfield, we're expecting you to make the play. So when we stunt and blitz and all that, we don't know who's going to make the play. Uh, so it, it appeals to... It really appeals to defensive linemen that are smaller. We're going to take our uh, first time out of the evening. We'll come back. Just a, a quick two-minute break. We'll come back. Uh, the Rocky Long Show here on ESPN 1700 live at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill, the official sponsor of the Aztecs Coaches Show in Grossmont Center. John Cantera, head coach Rocky Long, right here on ESPN 1700. Back here at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill, the official sponsor for the Aztecs Coaches Show, Coach Rocky Long, uh, each and every Wednesday night here on ESPN 1700, uh, 7 to 8, and then we'll, uh, at the end of September, uh, switch over to the Mighty 1090. And I uh, want to remind everyone, uh, you're going to the ball game on Saturday. Don't forget the Warrior Walk will take place at 2.30 this Saturday. Be part of the tradition when the team makes the walk into Qualcomm Stadium, starting in the E3. F3 parking area and finishes in the Aztec Village in parking area F1. So be sure to be part of this fan favorite event and cheer on the team as they prepare to take on the Panthers. Tell me about the Aztec walk. Uh, you like this, huh? Oh, I think it's a great tradition. It started uh, four years ago. This will be the fifth year of doing it. We, we take the team, entire team, uh, even the guys that aren't on the travel squad, we take the entire team in buses. They get dropped off. I don't know. It's quite a walk. You know, it's, it's I bet you it's uh, almost a mile. Uh, but we drop the team off, and the fans line a pathway that goes to the entrance of the stadium, and there's a lot of families there. Our players get to see their moms, dads, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, hugging on the side and everything. And it's all people that they feel comfortable with that support them, uh, it's gotten bigger every year, and our players really look forward to it. It's really a nice deal. You know, going from assistant coach to defensive coordinator all the years at New Mexico, now the head coach at San Diego State going into your third year, what do you think about all this media? You like doing this stuff? Because <laughs> I, I can say from a broadcasting standpoint, you have always been extremely gracious with your time and come on the shows whenever I've asked. But uh, uh, does it take away a little bit? Or have you learned how to kind of budget to where it doesn't take away from your planning uh, going against the next opponent? I, I think that's, I mean, since you were you coached, I, I think that's a great question. I, I think you learn how to handle it. When you first become a head coach, and it's all thrown at you, it's really kind of annoying because it, it takes away from your preparation and you have to learn how to budget your time a little bit better. I'm one of those guys who can sit in there and watch film for eight hours straight. And the only break I take is maybe get a cup of coffee or use the restroom. That's the only break I can take. And, and uh, the things that head coaches have to do now uh, takes away from that. But you learn, you learn how to handle it, and I don't, uh, you know, I don't dislike it, and I think it's very important for the development of a program. I, I think it helps recruiting. I think that you have to promote your program so people come to the game because I don't, I don't know if other coaches feel this way, but I feel a responsibility. I think basketball and football coaches feel a responsibility that we have to get people in the stands. Uh, because we're revenue producing sports and the revenue producing sports have to make enough, enough money to run the athletic department so that the sports that are worthy, which they all are, uh, that can't produce their own revenue are supported the way they should be supported. And I, I feel that responsibility and most football and basketball coaches I've been around feel that responsibility. Nine and four last year, seven and one in the Mountain West Conference. You, you win a title. How did that help you in recruiting? Oh, I, I think it was dramatic, and, and uh, winning always helps recruiting, but it's funny that the, all the talk about going to the Big East, I think, really helped recruiting. Really? Yeah, which really, really surprised me. We've got, we got more inquiries from across the country than we'd ever done before. We actually have, uh, out of our freshman class, they come from 10 different states. And I was really concerned because we committed a lot of those kids real early in recruiting. And I was really concerned when we went, 
the Big East fell apart and we went back to the Mountain West, I thought we might lose the two kids from Chicago or the kid from Georgia or the kid from Louisiana or the kid from Missouri. I thought we might lose those kids. And every one of them hung in there, so we didn't lose them. And what it has done is opened up more areas for us to evaluate players from. So it, the more players you get to evaluate, the better chance you have of picking good ones. Let's talk about Adam Dingwell. Uh, he came in last year, uh, you know, uh, at the 11th hour, an injury, season-ending injury. He steps in, and really, I, I don't think you could have asked for a better job. I know uh, they'd like, you know, you'd like him to complete a, a little bit higher percentage of passes, but for the limit of experience, he really did a heck of a job. Yeah, I, I think he did a great job. Uh, you know, he he was the. Not the starter in all of them, but he, he played a major part in winning seven straight games. And he was the actual starter in five of them. Uh, and he played really well. He didn't play very well in the bowl game, but, but he played really well the rest of the time. And I think that experience gives us some real confidence this year going into the season because he's improved dramatically. He, he's the leader of the team. Uh, he's, he's throwing the ball more accurately now. Uh, he understands the offense. The offense basically hasn't changed much. The emphasis by Bob has changed on what we do with that offense. But, but I, I think he feels very comfortable in the offense, and we expect him to have a great year. You know, uh, reading the, the paper, and a really nice article in the paper today talking about Adam and Coach Toledo and uh, to where Adam's going to have a little more freedom this year at, at the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, I think that that can be good and bad. Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the play will come in and the quarterback, you know, wants to be the next Peyton Manning, wants to change every play, and then you got to kind of dial it back a little bit. But how do you feel about his decision-making uh uh, progress just you know in training camp well I I, uh, I feel very good about it now I, I think and Bob will tell you this I think we're a hard defense to read we, we do so many different things and put people in so many different places we're a hard defense to read and and he read us by the second week in training camp he read us really well <laughs> and he was calling a whole bunch of the right plays so I think when you play against a less complicated defense I think he can do it now Coach Toledo would never let him do that if he didn't have confidence in him. And I think the time he played last year uh, where he developed into a starter, that he's got the confidence in. Obviously, Bob has the confidence in him, and I think he has confidence in himself. Now, Coach Toledo will reel him back in if he doesn't do it very well. Now, now let's talk a little bit about, uh, and I want to get into the depth chart at quarterback, but as far as Coach Toledo, is he going to be upstairs, or are you going to be on the field to where he can look in his quarterback's eyes? He's going to be on the field. Now, now I give the coordinators their choice. Uh, Andy Ludwig wanted to be up in the box because he thought he could see things better. Uh, Bob Toledo likes to be on the field because he thinks he can feel things better. And if he has a good spotter up in the box that's giving him the right information, uh, he probably can. He can feel what's going on. He can look in the quarterback's eyes like you, you say. He can, he can talk to him. He can settle him down. He can tell him that there was a bad check, good check, whatever. They can talk face to face. And I think a lot of good things get done as long as we get the right information from the box. Okay, how are you feeling about the other set of quarterbacks you have right now? Well, I, I think Quinn Kaler is the backup right now and probably will be the backup for the year. He's a junior college transfer that is extremely smart, understands the offense, picked it up really well, is very accurate with the football, and his arm's getting a little bit stronger. Uh, I think we've got uh, Jake Bernards is probably the most experienced guy we got. He's the third-string quarterback. And uh, after that, we have two youngsters that have unbelievable talent that aren't quite ready to play yet. Now, when you're developing a quarterback, and, you know, you, got, you mentioned the, the young guys, I mean, kind of explain exactly what they're going to go through this year. How are they going to get better being, you know, fourth and fifth? Well, uh, first of all, they, they uh, are the scout team quarterbacks, and they play off of cards, but they still get the practice of throwing the ball against certain coverages, and they learn how to read certain coverages. Because even though the card is there, they, the card does not show them what coverage the defense is playing. So when they go back to pass, they're very confident they won't get hit because we don't hit those guys. And they can start training themselves reading coverages. They still go through all the fundamental work that the quarterbacks do. They're with all the quarterbacks in the first 15 to 20 minutes of practice when they work on their footwork how they plant their front foot, how their arm comes through, and they throw a lot of passes 
in our passing game do a lot of the fundamental work before they actually start into the scout work. Let's talk about the uh, running back position. And uh, I know you don't want to wear one guy out, but hey, on a certain Saturday, he may have to carry the ball 35 or 40 times. I remember when you had Dontrell Moore over there in New Mexico, he got a considerable amount of work behind that big offensive line. Adam Moema. I don't know if he's the best running back in the conference. From what I recall of guys coming back and what I saw last year, yes, he is the best running back in this conference. The only time will tell for this year. How's he running, and who's uh, you looking to have him uh, backed up by? Well, I agree with you. I, I don't. I, I think he's the best running back in the conference. Uh, he's strong. He's quick. He reads the holes well. He breaks a lot of tackles. He's a great. He's a great pass blocker. Uh, he, he could do a little work on catching the ball out of the backfield, and Bob wants to do that with him, wants to get him out there in the open field so he can shake some people down and all that, and he has to catch the ball better than he is. Now, we have some very talented running backs behind him. None of them have been consistent enough that we feel comfortable saying they are the backup. Uh, the guy that played last year, Chase Price, he's probably considered the backup right now. Dwayne Garrett is a little bit bigger, kind of a stronger runner. Desan Hardwick is probably the fastest guy on our team, and he's playing running back. And then we've got a freshman named D.J. Pumphrey that knocked everybody on their, on their ears. Uh, the first couple times he carried the ball because he's extreme. He's quick. He's little. He's quick and he's extremely fast. I mean, he ran a 10, 500 meters in high school. Um, you might see him in every game with a two or three play deal where he gets a toss sweep or they throw a screen to him. He might return punts. He might return kickoffs. Uh, he won't be the starter there because we think we've got quality guys, but he's going to play this year, and I think people will like watching him. But I don't know who the backup is, but it's nice to have that many. Well, there's no question, and they are talented guys. Chase Price, I thought, uh, last year when he got opportunity, did a pretty good job for you. Uh, when, when you're talking about the guys really haven't stepped up and they haven't done it consistently, what are you talking about? Are they not hitting the hole? Are they fumbling? What's the problem? <laughs> all of that, all of the above. I mean, blitz pickup, yeah, stuff like that. Some of them aren't quite as some of them aren't quite as good at protecting the quarterback. Uh, some of them, the ones with real good speed, sometimes don't stay in the hole when it's there because it's not there right as they get the ball, but it's there by the time they hit the line of scrimmage. But they have great speed, and they've gotten away with it so long that they bounce it outside and try to outrun everybody. But at this level, they're not going to. So they're not, they're not waiting for the hole to open. Uh, so, some of them don't see the hole as well as others. Uh, some of them, when there's not a hole there, do, they don't make a hole themselves. And, and a good running back has to do that. There's, sometimes there's not a hole. So you've got to get your two or three yards by just dipping your shoulder and going. Some of them don't do that all the time. There's a, there's a lot of talent in that group, but they're not consistent at doing everything. Yeah, i got to ask you, because it's always a topic uh, with Ryan Matthews. He had a fumble last week, and you know I think he's a very talented back. Hopefully he can stay on the field this year for the Chargers. But ball security, uh, coaches are always yelling about ball security. It, when you've had guys that have had a, a tendency to put the ball on the, uh, the rug a few too many times, what are some of the things you've used to try to remedy that? Well, we, we do some ball security drills, and they get to stay after practice and do more of them than everybody they else. They get to spend some quality time with the coaching staff. Yeah, they staff, get to huh? spend some quality time with the coaching staff. And uh, in our case, if, if anybody fumbles the ball, if it's a snap from center, the center gets to stay afterwards, and the quarterback that dropped the snap gets to stay afterwards. If a receiver fumbles the ball, he gets to stay afterwards. And their position group gets to stay with them because uh, it's a combination of all of them. So if one running back fumbles, well, all the running backs get to practice ball security drills after practice. But, uh, you know, when I was a high school player, I fumbled a couple times in a game. The coach made me carry the ball from class to class. But uh, we don't quite do that. But they get a lot of extra work if they fumble. We're going to get to the bottom of the hour. We'll take a brief time out. We'll come back another half hour with head coach Rocky Long, the Aztec Coaches Show, live at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill right here in the Grossmont Center each and every Wednesday night during the college football season. This is ESPN 1700.
Welcome back to the Rocky Long Show, uh, live at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill, the official sponsor of the Aztecs Coaches Show. And uh, again, Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill in Rancho San Diego and Grossmont Center has award-winning food, great draft beer, bottled beer selections, and a fantastic happy hour specials, too. Click Hooley's.com for directions and more. Hooley's is the official host location of the Aztec Football Coaches Show each and every Wednesday night. Uh, also want to remind everyone about tickets still available for the Aztecs first home game this Saturday and it's once again the annual San Diego tradition of the KGB Sky Show. The SDSU welcomes Eastern Illinois into the queue as the Aztecs kick off the 2013 season and look to defend their Mountain West Conference title. Kickoff takes place at 5 p.m. with the Sky Show to follow the game. Tickets for the game start only at $12. To purchase tickets call 619-283-S DSU or log on to GoAztecs.com and uh, let's talk a little bit here Rocky uh, about uh, Eastern Illinois uh, interesting uh, uh, ball club uh, a couple of years ago they finished in the cellar of their conference they get a new head coach a young guy uh, been at it uh, now a long time he actually was a wide receiver coach at San Diego State in 1994 under Ted Tolner and that's Dino Babers and played at Morris High School last year the Panthers seven and five uh, they were uh, six and one in the regular season and won the Ohio Valley Conference and they're a team that likes to run the hurry up offense. They are and, and, and Dino's done a great job. I mean any any time a coach takes a team that was dead last in in the league and takes over programming in the first year wins the league and goes to the playoffs that, that's that's an unbelievable job of coaching and what he's done with that team I, I, I'm not sure what they did on offense before he got there but Dino came from Baylor and if people have watched Baylor on TV or saw Baylor in the Holiday Bowl last year, they know what kind of offense Eastern Illinois is bringing with them. Uh, they want to snap the ball quick. They spread you from sideline to sideline. They try to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups in the open field. And if they can uh, break or make uh, one guy miss in the open field, they end up getting big plays. It's kind of the wave that's going on in college football right now. Uh, where they don't huddle, they get on the line of scrimmage, they snap the ball, they snap the ball, and then sometimes they act like they're going to snap the ball. You declare what you do on defense. They stand up and look to the sidelines and get a play after the coach in the box sees what you did on defense. They get a play from up in the box that supposedly is the best play they could run against that defense. And then they try to get a play every 13 to 15 seconds and so that they can run over 100 plays in a game. And if you run over 100 plays in a game, guess what? You usually score a lot of points. Um, now, I've watched the UCLA Baylor film. I've watched a lot of the Baylor film as well as the Eastern Illinois film. And I haven't seen anybody slow it down. I didn't see anybody slow Eastern Illinois down last year. And I don't see anybody slow Baylor down. Uh, it gets into a scoring contest is what it usually gets into. My uh, question for you, uh, when they're running that many plays in such a short period of time, what does that, that do uh, to your uh, defense? I mean, you can't get guys uh, you know, third down, in and on, off the field, on the field. Uh, sometimes they're going to snap it. If they think you got too many guys, they're going to snap it, try to get a five-yard penalty, maybe keep a, a drive going. Uh, in first game of the year, this is going to be an interesting test for you. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's got me really nervous. But uh, what you brought up, I think, is a great question. That's a coach thinking about things because the rule is that if the offense substitutes a player, the defense is allowed to match up. Okay? In a lot of cases, um, that hasn't been the case. The NFL does a great job of it. I mean, I know the Philadelphia Eagles are going to run the Oregon offense or whatever, but the officials are going to control the tempo. Uh, the officials have to control the tempo, and they have to allow you to get substitutes in. The rule is if they substitute anybody on offense, the umpire is supposed to go up and hold the ball for three seconds and look to your sidelines to see if you're substituting somebody. And if you're substituting somebody, they're supposed to wait till your guy gets in. He can't wander in or saunter in. He's got to get in and the other guy's got to get off, but they're supposed to make the offense wait. So we're going to watch the umpire. And every time the umpire steps forward, that's when we're going to substitute. Our defensive kids most of the time substitute themselves. We give them a playing order. One guy goes for six plays, a guy comes in and breaks them for three plays, and then the guy comes back for six. Now, if they're equal uh, players, they go four and four. So we're, gonna, we're trying to train our players to watch on the sidelines. When they substitute someone, as soon as the umpire steps to hold the ball, we're coming in. 
and we're coming in and the other guys are going out. Now, if the officials will do that, we won't have any problem at all and we won't have a conditioning problem except every once in a while that offense goes to heck with you. We're keeping the same guys in the game and we're just going to keep calling plays. Now, you, now, now you guys got to stay in there and they've got to be in good shape. And I'm sure, uh, you know, that's really the game within the game. And I'm sure that you're going to watch the umpire. Your guys are going to watch the umpire. But I'm sure you're going to be uh, reminding the headlinesmen of that from time to time as well. Well, I'm going to talk to the officials before the game. Yeah. And, and there's been an emphasis on that this year to the officials because that and targeting. We've had a lot of talk about targeting. We've had a lot of talk about this because there's so many teams that go, are going to the hurry up. And there's a lot of defensive coaches that are kind of upset. In fact, there's some defensive coaches are calling for a, for making the offense go into a huddle. Even some like Saban and those guys are talking about that for the for the safety of the defensive players because they're tired and all that. I, I don't believe that. <laughs> I, I wish they would go into a huddle too. But I, I mean, shoot, that's you got to live with what the offense does and you got to respond correctly. Hey, I want to remind everyone, uh, Quality First Real Estate, San Diego's top real estate company. They can help you buy and sell and manage San Diego real estate. When it comes to real estate, it's always quality first. Click qualityfirstrealestate.com. And, uh, oh, boy, uh, biggest concern is, is it the defense, offense, uh, special teams. I would always think, uh, I know when I was coaching high school ball, I used to always be really concerned the first game uh, about the special teams because you can only – practice so much uh, to mm -hmm. make it as lively as you would like and you're worried about your long snapper your protection your return man is he gonna catch the ball uh, and your thoughts on that because that that's one thing you really never know until the bullets are flying well that's that's true and and we we spent a lot of time in practice on special teams uh, but you don't get a full speed look very seldom do you get a full speed look when you're practicing special teams and there's more big plays and special teams than anybody ever realizes. Just like you mentioned, if you drop a punt and the other team recovers, you've lost your possession with the ball and you've lost field position. So, so that those are huge momentum changers. If you block a punt, that's a huge momentum changer. If you return a kickoff for a touchdown, I mean, you just scored a touchdown and everybody's happy. You kick it off and they run it back on you. It completely puts the momentum right back on their sidelines. There's a lot of big plays happening in the kicking game. Okay, let's talk uh, wide receiver. Colin Lockett two years ago, he looked like he was headed to the NFL last year. He was Harry Houdini. I hardly saw him. What happened? <laughs> I, think, I think he earned some respect of the people that were out there and some people did some things to try to take him away. Uh, you know, and, and I would too. If I was a defensive guy and he was the big play guy, I would try to take him away. Now, the case being is the other guys have to step up. So uh, Dylan Denzo, Ezell Ruffin, those guys have to step up and make some big plays on their own. And then all of a sudden they've got to play it honestly. And then you're going to see Colin Lockett have a great year. So, so we think we have good receivers and we got to get Adam to get him the ball. But we got to get some big plays out of somebody else, and then all of a sudden you'll realize Colin Lockett's a big play guy again. Now, speaking of Colin Lockett, are you going to have him return kicks again? Because last year he, he did a great job in that area, over 25 yards of return last year. Yeah, he's, he's our number one kickoff return guy. And I think, and now I, I'm just remembering this because I looked it up, but it's like 50, he's only 50 yards from becoming the all-time kick return leader at San Diego State in history. So hopefully he'll get that pretty early or he'll pop a long one and it'll be over with. He had some pretty good guys there. Uh, I, one name that comes to mind, a uh, guy by the name of uh, Deacon Turner way back mm -hmm. when, uh, went on and played in the NFL a little bit. Okay, offensive line. That's always been uh, really the, the strong point of Rocky Long Coach teams. Uh, how do you feel about the offensive line and how deep are you? I feel real good about the offensive line. We're, we're a little young and inexperienced on the right side. Our, our guard is a redshirt freshman, Nico Saragusa. Terry Poole is our starting right tackle. He's a junior college transfer that we redshirted last year, so he's never played in the Division I football game. Uh, both of them are very talented, but they're so talented that uh, Zach Dilley was a starting right tackle last year. Okay, and a kid named Jordan Smith is going to start for us, and he's a redshirt freshman too. He's going to start for us at center. Well, Zach Dilley is the backup 
at center guard and tackle. Okay, <laughs> now he's not the only backup. We got two or three other guys to, to back up. We got seven or eight deep, probably that we feel confident in playing. But having a guy with Dilly's experience uh, really helps. And it also shows you the talent of those other guys. If a guy started every single game last year and now he's a backup, that shows you the talent of those other guys. And then on the left side, we got the experience. Joppa Gordon is the starting left guard. He started almost all last season. Uh, Bryce Quigley's the starting left tackle. He started every game last season. Uh, he's a preseason all-conference guy. He's probably going to get a chance in the NFL. So the left side's very experienced. The center and the right side are very young and inexperienced, but very athletic and talented. Uh, that uh, sounds uh, very encouraging. Let's uh, talk about the defensive line. Last year, a little bit thin on that defensive line. Sounds like things are really starting to come together for that group. Well, the best part of it is, is the six guys that played most of the time last year are back. And last year, we struggled early in the season because they were young, and, and we are kind of small because we count we talked about this earlier we count on them slanting and stunting and all that and moving around and chasing the ball and all that uh and so we had trouble getting a pass rush last year because they're kind of small and they weren't really talented or they're talented they weren't really skilled at rushing the passer and all that by mid-season they were pretty good and by the end of the season they were i thought very good uh and they're all back they're all back so we ought to be pretty good in the defensive line I think we ought to be pretty good at linebacker. If, if, if someone out there has two shutdown corners, I'll tell you we're going to be really good. We're going to take a, a quick timeout. When we come back, we're going to get to our California Bank and Trust Student Athlete of the Week. We'll continue our conversation. The Rocky Long Show each and every uh, Wednesday night through the month of September here on ESPN 1700. And once the Padre season uh, goes uh, good night for the remainder of uh, the year. We'll uh, have uh, Coach Long on each and every Wednesday night, 7 to 8, on the Mighty 1090. Back another segment of the Rocky Long Show on ESPN 1700. As we continue with the Rocky Long Show here on ESPN 1700, we want to get to our California Bank and Trust Student Athlete of the Week. Uh, the California Bank and Trust is proud to recognize San Diego State's outstanding student athletes. This week's California Bank and Trust Student Athlete of the Week is women's soccer star Jensen Skinner. Jensen's first goal of the season came in the 54th minute and helped propel number 11 San Diego State to a 1-0 victory over St. Mary's at the SDSU Sports Deck Sunday afternoon. The game-winning sequence occurred when Skinner dribbled from the left wing towards the corner of the box and fired a diagonal shot that found the right side of the cage. Skinner also led the Aztecs with a game-high six shots. Last year, Jensen appeared in all 24 games, scored two goals on the season and notch two assists. Jensen, a forward originally from Tulatin, Oregon, is playing her senior year with the Aztecs and is a health communication major. Once again, congratulations to Jensen Skinner, this week's California Bank and Trust Student Athlete of the Week. Uh, also want to remind everyone there's a new way to get to the Aztec Games on the trolley. You can now buy your day pass to the game on your smartphone. Avoid the ticket lines. Search for MTSM Ticket on the App Store and at Google Play. Download for free. Buy your pass anywhere, anytime. And uh, when you guys come out of the tunnel, you've been at this a long time as a player, assistant, coordinator, head coach. There's a special feeling walking down that tunnel coming on the field, not only, uh, you know, week to week, but opening night's a, a totally different environment, isn't it? Well, it certainly is. I mean, you you, you go through a range of emotions uh, in the locker room as you're getting ready to go out on the tunnel. Uh, you know, you're nervous, maybe even a little scared. Uh, you're excited. Uh, you can't wait to get the game going. And the great thing about football is, with all those emotions rolling around inside of you, after one good hit, I mean, you don't even have to make it. You might take one good hit. But once, <laughs> once there's a good hit out there, guess what? It's a game. It's a football game again, and, and football players live to play. And, but the emotions going into a game are something special. I know it's a little different on the road. You're in the hotel, and, you know, everything's kind of uh, uh, timed out. You know, you're going to eat at this time. You're going to get on the bus. Guys are getting taped at this time, so on and so forth. On a, on a Saturday morning, you guys play at 5 o'clock. What, what's Rocky Long do? What time you get up, and what do you do before you leave for the stadium? 
Well, I mean, we uh, we get up pretty early because we're used to getting up. You, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm a routine guy. Right. You have a routine in an off season. You have a routine during the season. During the season, the routine is you get up real early. So I still get up at the same time. Uh, we have breakfast with the players, and then we have meetings with the players. We do walkthroughs with the players, uh, and then we have a little downtime, uh, two or three hours where you go back and you watch games on TV. And then you get together with the players for pregame meal, and right after pregame meal, you have another meeting with them or watch a little film with them, and then you get on the bus and go to the stadium. Well, it's going to be a big ball game. Eastern Illinois comes in with that uh, kind of gimmicky offense. Uh, let's talk about your linebacking core. you got some guys that aren't afraid to uh, put the wood to uh, uh, opponents. This linebacking core really deep, isn't it? I, I think that we have great depth and really good players. I, I, Jake Feely is one of the best football players I've ever been around, and he and the stature uh, is not even close to the way he plays. Uh, Derek Largent's an outside linebacker that's a pro prospect. Van S. Harris is an outside linebacker, pro prospect. Nick Tannehoff is an outside linebacker that was a running back that's really developed into a good linebacker. And then uh, Micah Seau is going to play some this year. I mean, we redshirted him last year. He's got great potential. Uh, I mean, I think our linebacker core is pretty good and been pretty deep, too. Okay, uh, secondary concerns at the corner, but feel good about the safeties right now because of their experience. Yeah, we, we have six senior safeties, and uh, I have a special feeling for them because we all came in at the same time. Uh, and I was the safeties coach at the time. Right. And they were all freshmen with me, and they all redshirted, and then they all played a whole bunch the second year. And there were some growing pains, to be honest with you. There were some real growing pains. But now they're experienced guys. Uh, a couple of them have a chance to play in the NFL. The rest of them won't. But they know what they're doing. They understand the defense. They love to play ball, and they're a lot of fun to be around. I want to remind everyone, if you're interested in buying or selling or leasing commercial property, Quality First Commercial is a full-service commercial real estate firm. Visit our website, qualityfirstcommercial.com. QFC is here for all your commercial real estate needs. Uh, let's talk about the kicking game. Uh, who's going to punt? Who's going to kick off? Who's going to be your field goal guy this week? Well, Joel Alisi is going is to be the punter. Uh, West Fair is going to kick off and kick field goals. Uh, we already talked about Lockett's going to return kickoffs. Tim Vizzi's the starting punt returner. Uh, am I missing any? That's him, right? How about your holder and your snapper? Well, our deep snapper is Jeff Overbaugh, who does a great job. Was a true freshman last year and didn't have a bad snap all year. He snaps for field goals. He snaps for punts. Uh, the holder is Jake Bernards. He's the starting holder. We have about six guys that hold because you, ne you never know. You know, with Jake Bernards being the quarterback, if he has to go play quarterback, then we have to have a backup holder. But Jake Bernards is the starting holder. Uh, where are you at uh, now tomorrow? What's, what's a, a typical... Uh, Thursday for Rocky Long's Ball Club. What do you, you guys obviously aren't going to be physical tomorrow with uh, the game, you know, be uh, less than 40 hour, 48 hours away. What's a, a typical Thursday practice and a Friday practice leading into the ball game Saturday? Thursday's a dress rehearsal. I mean, we use scout teams, and the offense goes and moves the ball down the field against scout teams. Uh, they get into certain down and distance situations, and they put the scout team in the defense that we we expect to be in those specific, uh, specific situations. On defense, we script it too. We use two different fields, we script it too. And we put the plays at the hash marks in that area of the field, the down and distance that matches what they like to do. And we try to, try to have our, de our defense and our offense ready for the game. We also spend 30 minutes on special teams where we go through all the different scenarios of special teams. I wanted to ask you just a question because a week from now you're going to be going to Columbus, Ohio to take on Ohio State. Question, thoughts uh, regarding travel. Do you travel Friday to go in and play Saturday or do you travel uh, late Thursday and get in there so the guys can kind of get their sea legs and a good workout uh, at the uh, stadium on Friday? I, I think that's a great question. Uh, we have another long trip to Hawaii that's kind of going the other direction, but the same deal. Uh, we, we go on Friday. I, I, don't, I don't like to break routine, and I, and I think they're just fine with the routine. The, the problem is not that game. It's the game the week after that's the problem. That Now, we have a bye week after the first game that we do that, but the second the Hawaii game, you lose a day of preparation because you get back so late from that trip. And it's the next week that's the biggest concern, not, not the 
not the one where you go and you spend three hours and it's a three-hour time change and all that. You're fine at that game. It's the week after that that you are really concerned. We're going to take our final timeout. We'll come back, wrap it up with Coach Rocky Long, our first installment of the Rocky Long Show here at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill in the Grossmont Center on ESPN 1700 AM. Back after this. John Cantera back uh, with uh, Coach Rocky Long, the Rocky Long Show here on ESPN 1700 AM. Rocky, we got about one minute. What do you expect out of Eastern Illinois is, as far as what they're going to run uh, defensively against you? Well, they're basically a four-man front, and they've got a couple new guys up front. Uh, uh, they lost three guys off the starters. Most of them are starters coming back, or not starters coming back. They're backups. Their linebacker core is really, really good, and they have two safeties that are really, really good. So uh, up front, they're new. Linebacker, they're great. Safety, they're great. They, they're looking for a couple of corners, too. All right, Rocky, uh, good luck, and uh, we'll look forward to doing this again next Wednesday night. I Great appreciate job. it, Coach. Thank you very much. There you go, Coach Rocky Long uh, right here at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill in Grossmont Center each and every Wednesday. Uh, the first uh, uh, month, uh, first five shows, in fact, on ESPN 1700. Then Rocky will join me on the Mighty 1090 in the 7 to 8 o'clock hour each and every Wednesday night right here at Hooley's Irish Pub and Grill. I'd like to thank uh, Ted Mendenhall, Justin Kranz, and, of course, our man Jack Cronin for uh, Coach Rocky Long, Coach John Katera. Stay tuned. ESPN Radio right around the corner. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> For a long time, I used to do the games uh, on uh, radio, and I would always uh, be in charge of uh, the coach's interview of the opponent. So for about six or seven years, every year, this guy from San Diego would call this guy over in Albuquerque, New Mexico, to do the coach's interview. And every time, and this I've told Rocky this, I, and I've said it on the air before, I don't feel like I'm talking out of turn. I used to get off and go tell the guys that I were working with at the station, like, man, I love Rocky Ball. And this guy, man, he's a good football coach. He's motivating. He's passionate. Little did I know that a number of years later, he would become the San Diego State head coach. And